Okay, welcome back to Think Tech. It's the one o'clock block here on a given Thursday. And our special guest here on uh, Global Connections, Historical Connections in a way, is John uh, David Ann. He is a history professor and a historian in the fullest sense, okay, at HPU. Oh, yes. Welcome back to the show, John. Thanks, Jay. I'm glad to be here once again, yes. Definitely. Once again, we're glad yes. to have you. And, yes. You know, and uh, you know, we agreed to talk about impeachment today. So the title of this show is Impeaching Mr. Trump, uh, a Comparative Analysis. Uh, okay. It was a historical pr perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so just in the way of, um, you know, um, uh, the prologue, um, you know, I think a lot of people are concerned, including in Congress, that this president is pulling the government apart. He's, he's wheeling us, rolling us back for decades and decades, yeah. Yeah. taking all the, um, you know, the advances we've made and just destroying them in the name of some peculiar, uh, you know, constituency out there. And yeah. I'm not sure that they're, yeah. I know they're not the majority. Right. Right. And he's losing it for us mm. in many ways. Mm. This is a, may I say, using his term, that he's a loser president. Yeah. His, uh, his, uh, popularity is way down, yeah. what he's doing to our allies is shameful, yeah. and what he's doing to our social safety net is worse, and an environment is worse. I can't think of anything good here. Yeah. You know, his initiatives on health care are scary, yep. and, and tax reform, which is a euphemism, that's not tax reform at all, right. also scary. Right. Um, so going forward, it just looks bad. You know what they say? <clears throat> it's going to get worse before it gets worse. <laughs> John, you look at this from the point of view of a, an historian. Right, right. Uh, where are we on, in, in the possibility of getting him impeached? Oh, okay. I mean, soon. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's it's hard to judge. Of course, uh, these things are very fluid, and uh, uh, you know there are new revelations every week. So uh, that that's kind of disturbing, and that certainly has brought about the the discussion of impeachment. Um, but if we use history as a guide, then uh, impeachment. Uh, you know, it uh, when you look at impeachments that that happened in the past, there were there were actually two impeachments in the House of Representatives, no president has ever been fully been removed from office after having been impeached by the House, which means essentially the House of Representatives does the initial inquiry and votes to impeach, and then the Senate does the removal, and the Senate has this is never- a trial. That's that, the trial. That's correct. It's a trial, and that's, it's, the Senate has never gone that far. So in the, the previous two impeachments, Andrew J Johnson, and uh, Bill Clinton, then the Congress was controlled by the opposition party. I think that's quite significant. Mm -hmm. um, in, in 1867, when the Republicans controlled uh, the, uh, the, the Congress, and Andrew Jackson, who was a Democrat, uh, was the president, then uh, uh, they, the, the House of Representatives voted to impeach him. It's a complicated story, but it's, it's a, just the kind of a short summary of it is the House, the, the Congress had passed a law in 1867 intended to put handcuffs on the president, not literal handcuffs, but to handcuff him in terms of removing uh, uh, appointees, uh, the, the, in particular the Secretary of War, who was himself a radical Republican, had been appointed by Andrew Johnson early on in his administration. Johnson wanted him out because Johnson wanted more control over the military uh, operations in the South that were ongoing in the late 1860s. And this, and this was all sort of set, trying to settle down after the Civil War. That's correct. It wasn't so, settled yet. That's right. The Republicans had voted to send the military back into the South after Johnson had allowed Southern states back into the Union, then the Republicans revoked this. They turned the South into uh, five military districts and sent the, the, the Army back into the South. They were angry. They were angry, and uh, Johnson didn't like this, so he wanted to get control over the Secretary of War and, and end this. And uh, so, so this gambit, which is going back and forth, then the Congress passes a law called the Tenure of Office Act, in which they uh, handcuffed the president. They said, you cannot remove one of your appointees without the approval, the consent of Congress. <laughs> and so, uh, Johnson, so, <clears throat> and there was a clause in here that said, a president can remove an appointee during a recess, but then the Congress has to come back after the recess and approve that removal, right? So, <laughs> the other guy's gone already. That's, that's right. So, 
Johnson does this. He removed Stanton during a recess, and then the Congress came back. They were outraged. Uh, they refused to grant uh, approval to the removal, and then they looked into uh, impeaching uh, the president, and they started impeachment. You know, articles were were passed, and and uh, you know it got very close. The the House agreed to impeach. The Senate came within one vote of impeaching the president, of, of removing exactly? the president. Well, the, uh, the grounds were that he had violated the law by trying to uh, meddle in the affairs of Congress when they were, when they came back in and voted to uh, reject his, uh, his uh, re Stanton's removal, then Johnson didn't recognize it. Johnson said, no, no, I'm going to remove him anyhow. Uh, so, in, in effect, he was violating the law. Of Congress is yeah, what That's right, to. yeah. And, and he was violating this law, and the truth is the law was later uh, removed. Yeah. Uh, and it was revised even shortly thereafter. Maybe back, maybe. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we do. I mean, you know, this is the age of the imperial the presidency. The FBI, maybe, we, maybe we put some handcuffs on the president. So, so that's, a, that's a, a kind of a strange one, but um, they're all strange, quite honestly. So Johnson was able to serve out his term, but he was a defeated man. Uh, he, he got nothing passed. Uh, both houses of Congress were super majority, so, so they had no problem uh, passing stuff over his veto. Uh, and so it was, it was a very contentious time, of course, uh, you know, due to the, the Civil War itself and Reconstruction. Uh, but so that was, uh, that was the first time impeachment was used. Yeah. So, 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 and it. it put, put note to that. What yeah. that amounts to, though, is they took his wings off for the rest of the term. They, they, he ignored them? Okay, they're going to ignore him. Yeah. And they ignored him and, and essentially um, reduced his power. Yes. And query, there's a very interesting question proposed yeah. now. Yeah. Query, if, the, if Congress did that, and I'm not saying it would because yeah. it's all Republican right now, but if hypothetically Congress did that, these days, with the power of the presidency, they wouldn't be able to remove well, much of his I, power. Now. You know, the thing is, the power of the presidency, but, um, you know, California, the state of California, has uh, passed laws for on climate change that Trump doesn't agree with at all. Oh yeah. But so so the the issue of these emerging sovereignties, state sovereignties, is this is something that's relevant in a way that it wasn't a couple of decades ago. Agreed. Uh, and also, you know, the the Trump has the the problem with Trump is he's this terrible minority president. Uh, I mean, terrible. I'm using the word terrible to define minority. Uh, he might be a terrible president. Uh, he might not. You know, most people, I think, at this point, think he's not a very good president. His ratings are really low. His ratings are very low in the 30s. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, um, so the, the the problem is that, uh, or the or the maybe the the possibility is that Congress does take more power. I mean, the budget that Trump has, the Trump administration has put out is, is as it stands, is pretty much DOA. I mean, yes. the, the Republicans don't like it. I mean, one of the, the, the head of the, uh, the Freedom Caucus said, Trump proposes eliminating Meals on Wheels to senior citizens. That, that doesn't work for me. Get serious. So, so the problem is that Trump has defined himself with this minority of voters and continues to do so. He is a minority president in a very severe way. You remember we talked about this for, before, can Trump become a, a national president instead of, instead of appealing to this? It looks less and less like that's no, possible. No, at, at least in the, in the short term. He, he is not in any way. In fact, he's become more and more of a minority president. Embattled so now. That, that's right. So, so, uh, so it's possible that, that, that we might be seeing the erosion of the imperial presidency and Congress might want to take more power. Uh, we don't, we'll have to see about that. But uh, in terms of impeachment, then you have, of course, you have the second case. You have, so we have to move ahead. Yes. Uh, quite a long period of time. Yes, that to was the, quiet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> to the 1990s. Uh, and then we'll, after we get done with Clinton, we'll skip back to Nixon and talk about Nixon, because Nixon was a case where he would have been impeached. Uh, uh, and, and so, uh, Bill Clinton, so Clinton is accused of obstruction of justice and perjury, lying, uh, lying to a grand jury, and I and think— And to the American people. Uh, yeah, I think, in fact, he probably did. 
on a technicality. Right. What he said was, I never had sex with that woman. <laughs> That's right. Which is and, a, and that, as a technicality, that, the that words, is yeah. true, but, <laughs> but in fact, he had had sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> so, so, but uh, the, the House of Representatives votes yes on two articles, uh, uh, perjury and obstruction of justice, goes to the Senate. Uh, the Senate has to vote in two-thirds majority in order for removal of office to take place. Fifty senators voted for obstruction of justice, and 45 senators voted for uh, perjury. So it wasn't really close to the two-thirds. Um, it was disturbing, I think, to the country to see that impeachment was being done over something which seemed to be a technicality, uh, almost like an entrapment. Uh, and so, uh, but in doing so, the Republicans, I think, opened the door. Because what's interesting about this, and we'll get back to Nixon in a second, what's interesting about this, when you look at public opinion polling in the succeeding administrations, Bill Clinton steps down in 2001, the Bush, the George W. Bush administration, 30% of the popul of the voting po of poll the polled population thought that George W. Bush should have been impeached. This is quite high, I think. Yeah, yeah but, it's but, extraordinary. But was there was there a crime there? Well, not necessarily, but this is the nature of a, di a country divided between Republicans and Democrats. It's almost like evening. recall, you and, know. It, right, but the thing is. The impeachment of Clinton opened the door to this possibility to the other side. Sure. I think that's sure. part of why you see that 30%. It was in play. That's right. They, the Republicans put it in play in a way which I think was not impartial and not objective in a, in a, in a constitutional sense. It was partisan. Or a, yeah. That was too partisan. Um, you, can't, you can't eliminate the partisanship, but you can certainly not let it get out of control like the Republicans in the 1990s. So then when, Bill, when uh, Barack Obama took power in 2009, then 30% of the polling population Want believed that Barack him? Obama should be impeached. <laughs> so so this, is, this is a mate that, unfortunately, the Republicans opened the door to impeachment as something other than what it was kind of uh, intended as, as a constitutional remedy. Uh, and so I think we're going to continue to see this conversation about impeachment, even if Trump is not impeached. Now, let's go back to Nixon yes. for a second, if, that, if that's okay. So, so Nixon is the third case, and Nixon was not impeached. Nixon resigned before he could be impeached. How far did it go before he resigned? Uh, there were, the articles of impeachment were passed by the House Judiciary Committee. And that's when Nixon said, I'm gone. Before a vote by the House. That's correct. There was never a, early in the process. There was never a full vote by the House. Yeah. Um, and so Nixon... Uh, but he would have been impeached, don't you oh think? Oh, yes, yes. So, so uh, once again, opposition party is in power of the Congress. The Democrats right. were in charge of Congress. Right. And uh, I think they were preparing to impeach him. But not over... Uh, okay, I'll make a comparison here and maybe a judgment. But the Bill Clinton impeachment trivial compared to the Nixon uh, impeachment possibility. Nixon actually broke the law in several different ways. Uh, now there is this question, how much did he actually know or direct personally? But, but he broke the law several times, um, and he also uh, obstructed justice very severely. It's kind of there's at, some at things about substantive that. level. That's correct. At, at he, a national that's, initiative level. That's correct. He wanted his attorney general to fire the independent prosecutor who was looking into it. His attorney general refused, and he fired his attorney general. Uh, and you know the so-called midnight massacre. And so he was definitely trying to obstruct the process of justice in this case. Mm -hmm. Now is Trump trying to obstruct the process of justice in firing? Uh, Mr. Comey, in the midst of the FBI investigation, it looks like it, it's possible, okay? We'll know more when uh, James Comey testifies in front of Congress, in, in front of the, the Senate investigation. Well, he's trying, to, he's trying to escape that characterization. Yeah. You know, when it first happened, I think he wasn't fully aware of that characterization and how risky that was right. in light right. of Watergate. Yes. Um, but, but now um, he's, he's trying to back off that and, and create what he always creates, a distraction right. uh, from, from the point of law. Right. Right, but so so, but it's going to be hard. Honestly, 
His attempts to create distractions, Trump's attempts to create distractions, have almost always led him into further trouble. <laughs> uh, this, we saw this in the campaign as well. This is a guy who steps on himself all the time because he can't seem to, to stop talking, to stop showing his cards. Uh, so so th this is a real problem. So, so Nixon, of course, uh, you know, the whole Watergate scandal, the break-in at the, the Democratic National Headquarters, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what's interesting about the Nixon case, because it might be the best comparison to the, the current case, because Trump has already uh, maybe obstructed justice, just like Nixon did. Uh, so the, 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 the people, the American people, uh, actually, so, so Nixon wins re-election in November 1972. By May 1973, there are actually Senate hearings on the Watergate issue. And, and millions of Americans, estimated 73% of Americans, watched the Watergate hearing. It's astonishing. This was really played in, in uh, uh, middle America, you know. So, so Must have but, been Dan and Ole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I may, it maybe it was the, the Southerner Sam Irvin, right? Yeah, he was right. so he was the hero. He was charismatic. Yeah. Well, let's take a break for yeah, a minute, John. Sure. That's John David Ann. He's a history okay. professor at HPU. We're examining the historical perspective of the possibility of an impeachment for, for Mr. Trump uh, here on Global Connections, Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be right back after one minute. You'll see. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. the polls, but Congress does. They know. Well, uh, okay. We're back, Jay. Okay, we're back, and uh, I just want to, you know, John, uh, we're talking about impeachment uh, in both uh, the Nixon situations and, and the Clinton situations, but recently there was a, uh, you're going to love this, mm. recently there was an article um, in the New Yorker by a columnist by the name of Barowitz there. Barowitz is, is a funny guy. Mm. And uh, I caught this on where somebody sent me this article, and I and I was reading it, and it, it was something about impeaching Trump, and it, it was it was an an interview uh, with with Trump, oh, and okay. some reporter suggested to him that he might be impeached, and his response was, you know, I might be impeached, but <clears throat> it'll be the best impeachment you ever saw. <laughs> This, I will I will have the best ratings for my impeachment. My impeachment will be like no other impeachment in American history. <laughs> yes. yes. I don't know if you saw that. And I read this article. I said, my God, you know, this this happened. It's it's so real. <laughs> Come to find it was all tongue in cheek by oh, Okay. okay. But yeah. I mean, you know, it's tongue in cheek, yeah. but things are funny because they're essentially true sometimes. Right, right, right. And I think that's the way he sees it. I mean he he doesn't he doesn't he's not bothered. Yeah. In fact, he sees it as ratings and popularity. Yeah. Uh, he'd like yeah. to occupy the yeah. newspaper every day, yeah. all day. Right, right. And an yeah. impeachment would give him the chance yeah, to do this, that. Yeah, it's a perverse moment. <laughs> okay, uh, let's hope this moment moves on, you know, that we, we need to move on from this moment of uh, kind of, so, you know, this kind of uh, uh, Kim Car the Kim Kardashian of politics being in the presidency, you know. <laughs> I, 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 you know we don't, we don't need any more reality TV stars to, to be president, in, in my opinion. It's not serious enough. They're very serious matters, and we need to take it more seriously. Well, it is indeed. I was telling you, in my perception, that uh, the country is like a little depressed about this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. They don't see a good future here, yeah. and they wonder who's going to resolve this, who's right. going to step into the job, right. who's right. going to make it right, right. who's right. going to return us. Talk about making America great again. How about making America the way it was a few years ago yeah. under Obama? Yeah. That would be better. Yeah. Well, so th the thing about impeachment is that f it, this could go on for a while. That's Part of the lesson of the, the Nixon 
impeachment process is it took a long time but what would it be on the basis of you know there's a, there's a few things here the three things that come to mind number one is substantively what happened with russia yeah you know we've uh, yeah. all this distraction one thing after another from sessions on right. sessions confirmation hearing at right. the outset right you know and, and now we have uh, all kinds of other distractions but yeah. the main thread here yeah. is what happened in Russia? Yeah. Because because all the connected dots, the Times had an article laying out the evidence they right. knew. Right. Um, all the evidence that we, we know about suggests there was really, you know, fire under the smoke. Yeah. And there was yeah. something there. So one possibility, he, he's going to get caught red-handed somehow. It's, it's possible that he was using Russia to influence the election in his favor. Yeah. Second is, as you mentioned, obstruction and, and lying about things. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that, that's an interesting, but, it's not the same thing as, as the substantive right. approach. Right. Right. And the third thing, is general unpopularity yeah. because of other other things, other reasons, yeah. other decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, poor leadership. The, the, yeah. the things have gone from bad to worse to worse in this White House. So, and it, it's just he doesn't seem to be able to escape it. So, um, but uh, the, the 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 thing is, I, I think, and I'm I'm no legal scholar, but I think the obstruction of justice could potentially be the thing that undoes him. Uh, whether he's impeached or not, um, it 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 uh, uh, it just it's it's one it's one of the articles that Bill Clinton was impeached under obstruction of justice. Um, the, the test for obstruction of justice is pretty severe; it's pretty strict. So Comey would have to have more probably than his say so if he's got a memo, if he has his own tape. That would be damning. Even the memo. Even the memo. Not, not quite as much, but no, it would be no, damning. No, the, the memo is certainly something written. We're going to find out in a few days. We, we, are, we are indeed, yeah. So, um, so we, you know, the thing is, in, in uh, Nixon elected in, uh, in uh, uh, November 1970, re-elected in November 1972, it's August 1974 before uh, this whole thing ends. So, it, we, this, and again, this could go on for a long time. There are some Democrats who, have, of course, who have signed on to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, an, an impeachment, uh, 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 you know, goal for Trump. Uh, there are, but there are many Democrats, especially in the Senate, who say, wait, 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 you know. You have to go the through the yeah, process. You know, we yeah. have to, we, we got to find evidence here. We got to, you know, w this is going to take some time. It's not going to happen overnight. So. So we're just going to have to we're just going to have to wait on this, um, and uh, you know. Uh, but you know, this is going to be different. This is going to be different than Johnson. It's going to be different than uh, uh, than Nixon. It's going to be different than Clinton. I mean, for a variety of reasons. One is he's really becoming very unpopular. Every every day he gets yeah. more unpopular. Yeah. People really can't tolerate yeah. that. Even the ones who voted for him without yeah. thinking no, about it. That's right. It. Um, and then you know the the other thing is that he's he's not going to take this lying down. He's not going to walk away to the helicopter. You know the way Nixon did. He's not going to do that. Um, he's going to fight. He's going to, you know, bring all his guns in and yeah, fight yeah, everything yeah. right yeah. along the yeah. way. And I think, you know, the um, the other part of it is, uh, is it's a joke with Barowitz, but the mm. uh, mm. fact is uh, he'll be in the press every day. This will be a national contortion right. for as long as it takes. Right, right. Um, if they if they find something, you know, substantive mm -hmm. that happened with Russia. Mm -hmm. And you know, hand in the cookie jar kind of yeah. thing. I think it will be quicker. Yes, uh, I, I think absolutely because that's um, you know that's very bipartisan. Okay, that that's that's an easier case to make. If and it's it's not just uh, bipartisan. It's also national security. I mean, we can't protect the security of our elections if we've got our own leaders conspiring to uh, to tilt the election right you know colluding with a foreign power right wow wow, wow. <laughs> that would it be that, every sensibility if, i mean if trump wants history that will make history yeah okay that will make him uh, an an infamous figure in the annals of history i will be talking about trump in my lectures from here on <laughs> out if, if that's the case uh, there will be no blip on the screen so uh, but but we'll we'll have to see about that um, that's not clear yet yeah. yeah but I mean it will be different and it's so interesting to predict how it would roll out um, you know uh, it, it could it, you know John would even though it might take two years to finish yeah. it might start pretty quick uh, now that he's back from Europe, yeah. uh, now this investigation is proceeding now the yes, special counsel I mean, is involved uh, it, I think it the, the thing is, uh, you, you have to get some folks to start spilling on this, right? You have to get somebody to actually start telling what actually happened. 
We haven't gotten that yet. Uh, maybe Michael Flynn is going to do that. To me, Flynn is the key to the Russian connection. But now we find that uh, Kushner. Yes, Jared Kushner, Trump's uh, son-in-law, is deeply involved in this connection and was trying to create a back channel uh, after the election. So can I, can I offer this thought, though? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, yes, just like Watergate. It's a question of who comes forward, who is the deep throat, yeah. who is going to reveal all, because yeah. somebody out there knows in detail what happened. Yeah. In, in the time of Watergate, and maybe you know, most times, there's a certain loyalty to the president. Yeah. There's a certain, you know, you don't want yeah. to bring him down. Right, you want right. to be the guy who changed history in a negative way. Right, right. Uh, so you, you, know, you keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Um, but now, he's alienating all the people around yeah. him. They're yeah. bailing out of the White and House. They won't come into the White House. No, that's right. And, this, and, and Trump is singular in his ability to alienate both friends and foes. Um, it's unbelievable how quickly he has just, you know, gone down the path of just uh, alienating everyone. So, uh, so uh, but, and the other thing to think about is, you know, uh, it, the thing is, Trump has this kind of populism, but you think about Nixon in 1972. Nixon won a landslide election, um, you know, 67% of the vote. Uh, so it, it, you know, even the mighty can fall, and even those with a strong populist kind of uh, base can fall. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, we have to stay tuned. We'll, we'll see what happens here. But. But, but look at the larger picture. For We only have a couple yeah. of minutes left. Yeah. And then how is this, I mean, from a historical point of view, how is this affecting our country? How is it affecting the relationship of John Q. Citizen with the federal yeah. government? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, there was, uh, of course, tremendous alienation against, against Congress and against the government in general before the election, uh, and Trump has simply enhanced that. I mean, there are people who now, you know, they, they don't like Trump anymore, but they hate the government. Trump becomes the government. They hate Trump. So left, right, center, people are becoming more alienated from the government. You know, it's, we, you know if, if it's a post-national moment or, or if it's, if it's post-national America where we don't really, we can't find a consensus, we can't come to agreement, then, uh, then Trump has just pushed us further down the pathway to alienation. And quite frankly, so, so domestically, I think you see this continuing erosion of national, uh, the possibility of a national consensus. I mean, it might not ever happen again. Um, and can a country function well in that? I think the founders established a system because of the state sovereignties, because of the federal system where states have power, enumerated powers, the federal government has other powers. I think you could see a time where the, the government can function more effectively from the states than from the it's center. happening now yeah. in, in California, yeah. as you that, mentioned. That's right, and in other places. That's so, right, all of the West Coast is involved that, in that, that. That's correct. Without a schism or a secession, this secession talk is nonsense because yeah, yeah. we're so tightly knitted together economically. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's, you could, it's possible that you could see that, 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 that the nation could adjust to this kind of uh, more, you know, we had this before the 20th century where the states had more power and the federal government less power. One wrinkle this points out is that, you know, people assume the federal government will keep on. You know, then I think their confidence was, was shaken when they found that we went to the, the cliff every year yeah. and trying to get it funded. Right, well, why, right. why is that seems so housekeeping? Why can't we do that? Right. But now it seems to me that the government is in convulsion. Yeah. And many, many of the agencies yeah. don't have heads yet. Right. FEMA, right, right. for example, doesn't have a head. Right. Uh, my, you know, we expect some bad weather this yeah. year without a head at FEMA. This yeah. is risky business. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it raises a question as to whether the government is properly can properly operate with all these, mm, you know, problems around Trump yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and perform its function in a time when we need it to perform its yeah, function. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the, the thing is Trump has, of course, he's alienated the bureaucracy. Right away, he alienated. They, they didn't like him from the start, but he's further alienated them. Alienated them. Um, and yes, there's, there's going to be very little leadership out of the White House. But um, I, I think he, is, he hasn't done much to, to actually destroy bureaucracies yet. 
So I think the bureaucracies in the short term can continue to function to make American government function, you know, to the to some satisfaction of the American people. So, but it's this is short term. Okay, uh, we haven't had a budget fight in the fall yet. Um, we haven't had, uh, you know, a lot of executive orders which might mean something down the road, but don't necessarily mean anything right now. So we'll have to wait and see as to whether or not this, you know, causes a cr not just a crisis of of governing, but a crisis of the American system, yeah, the American federal yeah. system. It's a, it's a, it's a historian's uh, delight. Yeah, well, Every, everything that's happening we is changing. We live in interesting times. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, John. Day, sure. man. great to have you here. Yeah, we yeah. got to do it again. Okay, There's so much more to come. Yeah, yeah, fine, Jay. <laughs> I'm glad to do it. Thank you.